Hey guys, welcome to Iconology. Um, today we're going to do a little bit of a walkthrough tutorial on setting up auto docking um, for your for your ships and stations. Well, for your ships to your stations, that is. And um, this is a survival world, keeping it real with survival. I'm going to show you the process of how I'm doing it. Um, I will also include some of the problems that I'm having so you guys can keep an eye out for those and check for information on it. So. Um, we'll try to keep this pretty quick, but uh, basically, first I'm going to give you a rundown of what needs to happen. So, um, wow, this whole thing is going to get updated. So I'm actually going to do a couple, I'm probably going to do two videos on this. Um, the reason being that this ship is actually going to be set up with auto um, departure and auto dock. Right now, I just have remote control blocks set up to auto dock it. Um, but that's okay. We're going to show you how it works and then we can come back later and I'll show you a finished product that has both auto departure and um, auto docking built in. So um, to do this, first of all, we're going to boot up my ship here. I've got it set up on a couple of timer blocks. So you turn it on. You go to the second tab. There we go. So this ship, of course, is available on my Steam Workshop. Um, again, big shout out to Happy Sushi with the enhanced cockpit concept and also M master for the scripts on the LCDs. But let me show you guys how this works. So first we're gonna go ahead and let's see, looks like I'm locked in. So we're gonna turn off the lights, gonna turn off the connector. There we go, we're free. So this ship um, is awesome. This is like my main mining ship. And the thing about it is I set it up to be fast. Um, right now it's kind of disassembled. I took, took the hood off the back, but um, it's set up to be able to get you in and out of a fight if need be. It's got Gatling turrets on the front as well as reloadable rocket launchers. Um, when it's a little further along, I'm going to, of course, update it on the Steam Workshop and then do a, a video for it so you guys can see kind of what I'm doing with it. Thing is that, um, as you can see, at any point in time, any little bit of acceleration actually takes a long time to slow it down. So um, as a result of that, I crashed a lot to be honest with you. And also, um, right now, as you can see, thanks to the script, um, the middle screen shows us that we have zero ores and the screen on the right there shows us that um, the cargo is empty. That is actually the first bar on top is set up to be the cargo container and the connector and actually the cockpits now store um, ores and things as well. 10,000 liters them to be exact and 10 times um, storage capacity. But that top bar shows that the lower one there shows um, drill overflow and the reason I set it up that way is like I said I crash it and um, when you so I'll show you really quick actually how that works when you um, when you go to do this like if you were going to be mining and after a while with three drills um, even with the small ship with three drills it doesn't take too long to fill up the whole thing actually so like if we're going right now you're going to see, and again, this is great for exploratory mining, especially if you don't have reactor or um, detector components yet. Um, I actually forgot to turn the script on. should be that one. Sorry about that, guys. Derping out for a sec. Um, when I turn off the timer block, I don't have it set up to restart. So we'll trigger that now. There we go. It's going to update. There we go. So you got iron. Um, it's showing you how much I have in the way of iron and you can see that's going up and also on the right if you noticed it's using up some of the cargo capacity um, when the ship gets full that spills over into the drills so that's fine but if you crash it and the drill blows up since they are the leading edge of the ship you get a big old block of up to like 90k of whatever the ore that you're mining is um, if you're out in space it could of course float away if not it's obnoxious to have to go back and get it manually um, so yeah, a little bit of griping, but um, the reason that I say that is this is the way my station is set up. It's kind of in a tight area here. Um, you notice the Argivantis that was actually depowered 4,000 meters from here. I could see it. Um, it was by these this big collection of them here. It was kind of over this way. I could actually see the thing. I thought, why the heck is there no power to it? Went over there. Still don't know why it was depowered. I think it's part of the exploration update, but um, I was able to like take all the turrets and stuff out of it and then power it up so I kind of stole one and that was legit survival so really really exciting because now I can adapt that to do other things with um, also I took the scripts from it and I'm working on some homing beacons for those freaking annoying Gatling turret platform things that come over and are just a nuisance um, 
So let's get to it. So this is what I have as far as auto docking at the moment. Um, if you go to, so it's it's done through your remote control block. You can do it using a series of waypoints and it works best in combination with a timer block. So in this case, um, it's gonna take us first through exit three, two, and one, which get us through the kind of the tunnel into the asteroid. Above outside door is a point that I'll, again, I'll, I'll point these out, but um, above the outside door brings us in right above a big iron ledge. Um, so I, so you don't run into the wall of the asteroid. And then it actually, I have it set up to go straight down to sit outside the hangar door. And then it goes inside, turns around and backs up is essentially how this is going to go down. Um, essentially how it's going to go down in theory. Um, this does actually work pretty predictably, but because I've been reconfiguring it quite a bit, um, every once in a while you get some unexpected outcomes. Two things to keep in mind, precision mode does work. Um, with this particular ship and the placement of the remote block, precision mode is functional, but it's a little bit buggy because it'll sit there and I'll see if I can get an example of that. It'll sit there and rotate around and it'll try really hard to make it happen, but it won't, like it'll be within 0.5 meters of the waypoint, but it doesn't recognize it. Um, so it'll sit there and spin and it just won't do it. So if you turn it off, of course it immediately works. Um, and also it doesn't, even without precision mode, um, you're still, able to have the ship be careful enough to not crash is actually much better than I am at that getting into this place. So that's one note. Um, also collision avoidance, same thing. It's still set up to just a big box around your ship. And because there's a big trend right now for small ships gone wild, um, it's actually really big. And so if I had it on right now, if I were to enable it, my ship would actually back up because it thinks it's too close to asteroid and even the Argivantis and of course it thinks it's too close to my big solar oxygen farm array here so um, without further ado let me show you how this is going to hopefully work so we got to make sure we are flying in forward mode one way um, otherwise it'll kind of trip out and it won't actually do it you want to make sure your waypoints are reset so it doesn't try to fly through the asteroid because we do have collision avoidance off um, but then we're gonna go ahead and hit autopilot on so of course we got autopilot enabled. Um, I'm no longer able to control the ship, so it's kind of a good idea to either have a separate set of gyroscopes. Um, actually, now that I say that, I don't think you could even do that because the remote control block will take them over. Um, but I do have a hotkey bar here, a hotkey item to um, disable it if need be so I don't blow up the ship and have to reload and everything. So right now it's taking us, as I mentioned, um, that was exit one, and now it's taking us to above outside door. This is so that, turn the lights on so you can see. Oops, I turn the ship off actually. Ship back on, <laughs> there we go. Turn the lights off. Um, you can see there's these ledges around here and if you were to go straight down, you'd run into them. So this actually um, keeps us from doing that and it exemplifies that you can actually select the direction at which the, auto, um, the autopilot moves with the remote control block. So we're going to go inside. It's going to go to the inside door waypoint. It's going to go then to the minor straight out waypoint. It's going to spin around, go backwards. You heard it activate a timer block there and a sensor. Um, it's now going to back straight up and hook up to the dock. There are a couple of problems. The first one being that when it gets to this point, it's supposed to enable a shutdown timer block. Um, but with, you know, with the some sort of amount of reasonability um, even with the remote control block set up right on point um, with the current location it's not able to recognize that and it doesn't actually enable that timer block so if we go into our um, our configuration menu here if I trigger that block for you the shutdown block you'll see that there we go it d it turns the ship off you heard another set of refineries kick on that's probably actually the uh, um, the blast furnaces just turned on uh, because we had those like five kilos of of, uh, of ore in the drills. This locked in, um, and of course the ship is off. So that's actually something I like for immersion. It turns off the screens, they say offline and all that stuff. So that's a rough example of how this works, but let me show you how you actually set this up. Um, so first of all, you want to make sure that you have your waypoints set correctly. The best way to do that is to when you have your ship, you obviously have a remote control block. What you want to do 
um, is make sure that the waypoints that you set are actually in line with where the remote control block is going to be. What that means is that if you're just flying your ship around determining your waypoints, if you are the player, like right now if I were to, you know, scoot down here, turn this on, and if I were to go to GPS and create a new waypoint from current position, um, it makes it at your feet. So if you do use your feet, keep that in mind. Um, you can make waypoints as a player, but it'll be at your feet. So then the ship will do kind of funky things. I'm going to go ahead and delete that because um, what you, the best way to do this, what I've found and what others have found, um, this is a weird view. That was weird. Anyways. Um, wow, what the heck? There we go. So, when we're in here, um, turn the ship back on, disable the connector, and then turn it off so we don't blow it up as we fly away. What you can do is if you go to your remote control block and you control your ship from that block, you'll see that I no longer have my hot tab items in the G menu because we are now controlling the ship with the remote control. The benefit of this, um, let me turn off the spotlight so we can see. The benefit of this is that now, if I were to make a new point, pretty much in the same location as where the player was, um, notice this. So because we're controlling the ship from the remote control block, if we make a new point from the current position, you can see that that point is generated actually right in the middle of the remote control block. This is obviously very useful because it allows you to set up a very precise location, as in if it's um, hooked up to the connector, but also like wherever else is on your path. So in this case, I used that to know that when the mining ship comes straight out from its dock, um, it's not going to run into anything because I'm able to set the ship right here where I want it, pretty much in line with the door, um, but largely straight out from its connector. Um, it's not going to run into the stairs. It's not going to run into that antenna. It's not going to run into any air vents or any ships floating around for that matter. Side note on that, um, I had a awesome mining ship that sat there at that connector and honestly I don't know what happened game glitch the ship blew up holding all of my components and totally wrecked everything else that was in here so um, pretty unhappy about that but luckily this ship was unscathed so um, with that in mind one thing to keep in mind for um, for your first point is that you need to have a point at the dock um, so your ship is, of course, going to be able to recognize that it's straight out and that's where it needs to go when it backs up to the dock. You then need to have a point that's exactly straight out from there because when your ship comes in here, um, it's going to be able to, it's going to need to be able to line up and when you have it fly in reverse, it needs to be exactly level with that connector and it needs to be straight out. So that way it has it doesn't come in at any sort of angle. Um, you have a a reasonable degree of of error with this. I mean, you can have it a little bit off because, as you know, when you get really close to the connector, it doesn't really care what angle you're at. It um, it pulls you in anyway. So that is one one thing to note. I mean, it has to be close, but it doesn't have to be totally perfect, and that's true of most of this. So the next logical point in this case was just inside the hangar door, um, and then the next one would be outside the hangar door, and so on and so forth. Just keeping in mind in each location that you have enough room um, on either side of your ship or on any any one angle that no matter what direction your ship is flying in at, um, it's not going to blow anything else or itself up. Now, this is the fun part of the remote control block. When you set it up for autopilot and you give it a series of waypoints, at each waypoint you can actually set certain actions to happen. So in this case, um, in the context of auto docking, the first thing that happens, and I'll actually fly out there so you can see this, and I'll, I'll talk through them as they're happening. So I switch back to my player view. We're going to go ahead and fly the ship out. Of course, I like first person. Um, it's, I mean, it's probably easier to fly it in third person perspective, but with the, with the cockpit LCDs and everything, this is just way cooler. So it makes the game a lot more fun, in my opinion. Um, spotlights, you know, pretty hard to see. Also, we're on the dark side of the asteroid right now. Um, so there's a perfect example. I just blew off a drill, I think. No, I didn't blow off a drill. Something blew up. Oh, yeah. 
I took out the whole <laughs> storage container and everything, but that's okay. Um, that's actually a good demonstration of the fact that when we come over here um, and we go in this way, the ship is going to be largely unaffected by the fact that it just lost the majority of its guts. I think it lost a couple of um, gyros with that. We lost the rocket launcher. Um, and you can see where the pipes came in. That's actually kind of sad, but also kind of cool looking, I guess. Um, you can see that this is running off the battery power. Um, so yeah, either way, it doesn't matter. So with the remote control block, the first thing it does is um, at the way, so at the different waypoints, um, where of course they're giving them an order of what which waypoint is gonna come next as we're getting closer to the station. So exit three is our first waypoint. In this case, what I have it set up to do is um, to first of all, turn off collision avoidance. Because one, one thought that I had is if I'm out mining and if I trust my autopilot system to dock the ship within this tight space better than I can without being super careful and taking a long time, um, I wanna be able to trust it. But while I'm flying in space, there might be an asteroid between where I currently am and where my base is. So by having collision avoidance on, when you're out in space, it actually does help to keep you from running into things. But once you get in here by the asteroid, um, you have to turn that off because otherwise it's gonna freak out and it, it'll just sit there idly and it's not gonna do anything. So first of all, we turn off collision avoidance. Um, and I also set the direction to forward because sometimes um, that direction does get switched. So you wanna make sure it's forward. From that point, um, and again, precision mode, I'm not using until the very end. It, it does turn it on at the last point. Um, but from that point, exit two, exit one, and then up two um, above outside door, they're all just moving forward, everything is the same. When we get to the above outside door waypoint, and I'll show you where that is, so that's where we went through exit three, um, everything was turned off, I'm gonna hit this wall, that's what I mean, this is exactly why I have this ship, it's unfortunately like kind of hard to control because it does go so fast. I lost my up thrusters, that's why this is acting weird. That's actually gonna affect this video. Anyways, um, it gets to above outside door and from here, I guess I have one up thruster left. From right here, um, it gets the command to go straight down. And you can do that again simply just by setting up the action, um, telling your remote control block to fly straight down. So if we're to do that, drag it over, and you can see all the directions here. So we want to select down. Um, it's then going to go straight down until it gets outside the hangar door where it recorrects itself to go forward. Um, and it's going to do that until it gets inside the hangar door. And then finally, where this is where it gets exciting because when you're straight out from, when you get to the point, in this case, minor straight out, when you're straight out from your connector, um, I have it do a couple of things. First of all, I have it turn on the connector because I usually leave that off while I'm flying. I turn it off when I leave the connector because otherwise it blows too much thruster, you know, thruster thrust at it and it, it damages the, the block and sometimes it breaks. So you don't want that to happen. So I turn it off, leaves easily. Um, in this case, I do turn on precision mode so it doesn't back up really hard into that connector. It wasn't an issue actually with it off, but um, either way, and so I'll actually in this case, I'll show you, we'll do it one more time, I'll show you what it looks like with that off. And then um, finally, we do set it to fly backwards, and that's so obviously because the connector is on the back of the ship, it needs to fly backwards in order to make the connection. So um, we're going to gently, very gently, hopefully, um, fly out of here. So we're out. What I'm going to do now is make sure I'm clear of the Argivantis. I'm actually just kind of kind of coming from this angle. Um, in reality, I'm gonna add one more point that's about here, so it gives me a straight shot. So anywhere in space, it'll come in. Collision avoidance will be on until this point, so it won't hit any of these asteroids around here, or any of the smaller, almost like moons, like sub-asteroids. Um, and then from right here, it'll turn off collision avoidance, and then it will have a straight shot into the base. So let's do that. We'll go to remote control. Again, making sure that we are in the forward direction. We're going to go ahead and reset our current waypoint. Okay. Actually, just to be double safe, we'll select that. We're going to reset one more time. That way, it'll give us our next waypoint being um, exit three. And then we're going to enable autopilot. And again, this will be interesting because we did lose some thrusters there.
So it's going to fly in this way. As you can see, it already breaks more efficiently um, than anything I ever do. And this is with precision mode off. Keep in mind, all of this is with precision mode off. So it's a little cluttered and hard to see, but you, you can tell that here's exit two. So it's flying in this case again. It's got space away from all of the asteroid. I gave it exit one so that it's between, it's at a proper height between the station and the other asteroid. In reality, it could pretty much fly straight to above outside door, but I'm using the same waypoints for more than one ship, so I wanna make sure it's got enough room. Again, this is a really tight base, but I like to stick with really compact ships. So you can see it flew straight down. Autopilot is still enabled. I'm gonna turn off the lights now so you can see better. Flies inside the door, goes to inside hangar door, again, because there's, that, that lets you use the same points for also um, like the ship that sits next to it, so you don't have to go through and redo everything and have all the clutter on your HUD. Then it's going to back up. Boom. Um, and then again, the timer block doesn't activate for whatever reason, and that's one of the things that I actually was going to point out. That is a problem at this point. Um, the timer blocks aren't super happy about activating um, right when you come in, so that is something that's just up with this point minor dock. As you can see, I mean, that point is literally directly in the center of this remote control block, and it still thinks, for some reason, that it's not able to, to see it. I mean, it thinks it's not there. Um, I've tried to redo it a few times. It always goes to the same place, but it doesn't actually see that waypoint when it gets in here. It flies to it, but it just doesn't activate the timer block. So I can gripe all I want, but in reality, all I have to do is put it on the hotbar, um, I don't remember which one it is, so we're just going to go timer, block, shut down. We're going to trigger now, and boom. Ship turned off. You can see the thrusters turned off, gyros turned off, drills turn off. Um, all the weapon systems turn off, so you don't accidentally blow anything up. Um, lights turn off, I think I already mentioned thrusters. Um, and yeah, everything actually shuts down. Actually, most importantly, the antenna shuts off, so you don't have another unnecessary antenna um, within the ship, because if you were, say... Say we needed to use this remotely, um, it's still totally possible. Even though the ship is off, it's now connected. So that can, it's okay for that antenna to be off because the base, of course, has an antenna. So if you come here and then we find, um, we're going to find the group that says Minor Boot is the name of it. So it's the Minor Boot Up group. So here we are, Minor Boot. If we toggle the block on, boom. Ship turned on, you know, everything's good to go. And actually, if I'll, sh you know, I'll show you that timer block off one more time. So timer block du, 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 du. timer block shut down is the one you can see it's orange it i mean actually i'm going to relabel this right now timer block minor shut down makes it a little bit more clear so you know what it's a part of you always got to have that good nomenclature especially when using different scripts i mean i have lcd scripts i have a million different scripts that run in the station but if we start this timer in 5 4 3 2 one there beautiful ship is off we're good to go or is of course being loaded in um, I have these welders here that I can enable to of course fix the fact that I derped out ran into something and blew off half of the internals of my ship but now it's cool like I could kind of ride around in here I kind of like this but anyways guys thanks a bunch for watching if you stayed to this point I really appreciate you supporting this channel early on um, if you'd be willing to give it a like, maybe a subscribe, it's a big deal to me, you know, maybe watch a couple more of my videos and, and be annoyed and go away, but hey, even the temporary thing is good with me. Um, I love the game Space, en Space Engineers, I love to play it and get the content out here for you guys, so um, if you enjoy it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and you'll see some more of it. So, thank you guys again very much and have a great day.